Hello and welcome to the Hoboken Historical Museum. We're streaming live uh, from Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, this is Hoboken Talks, where on Thursday nights we talk about Hoboken. I'm your host tonight, Bill Curran, and I'm so happy to uh, have our guest tonight, Maggie Hinders. Uh, please feel free to chat with us uh, in the comments section on your Facebook and YouTube area, and we'll do our best to respond. We consider YouTube our home base. So if you miss any of our Hoboken talks or want to look at some of the earlier shows we've done, please do that on our YouTube channel. Maggie, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's fun to be here. I love that blouse. It's so pretty. It <laughs> reminds you. me of your beautiful paintings. <laughs> Thanks. I wanted to read the introduction that was on our website saying um, a little bit about your background. And then I thought okay. from there we could begin our conversation. Okay. That sounds great. It says, um, Maggie is a book designer, a painter. I've added a runner and an utter delight. She's lived in Hoboken for 37 years which means, as she puts it, she's lived through yuppies invade my house at dinner time era. She was born in rural Western Ohio and moved to Hoboken shortly after attending art school in Cincinnati. A Hoboken artist, Kevin McCloskey is a friend. She and her husband, Tom, were married in 1986 the wedding took place in their apartment and was officiated by Tom Vazetti, whom the Daily News memorably dubbed America's wackiest mayor. Uh, Maggie, please bring those 37 years of photos. Well, welcome, Maggie. Um, what I've been thinking about uh, prior to our talk is how the heck did you get um, the mayor to marry you in your apartment, Mr. Tom Pizzetti? Um, well, it was pretty simple. We asked him. And we, had, we had actually heard that the mayor would perform ceremonies in people's homes if you made the appointment. So that we thought that would be great. And that's what we did. And uh, at the appointed time, he, he arrived with his registrar and um, he officiated at our wedding and stood around and chatted with some of the guests and then went off to marry somebody else <laughs> in, in the, you know, later in the afternoon. So that's that was done back then. And it just, I don't think it happens anymore. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so you were uh, fairly close with him? No, not particularly. I mean, he was friendly with everybody. Yes. Um, and we would... No, but we didn't, I don't think he knew us. He knew us as Hoboken citizens. He didn't really know us as that um, personally, mm -hmm. but uh, he was a great guy. And I have a, a little story, a little Tom Vizzetti story. A friend of mine was coming back from, carrying, coming back from the laundromat, carrying a heavy load of laundry on a particularly rainy day. And her hair was streaming down her face. And he passed her, tipped his hat, and said, lovely as always, my dear. <laughs> and that was, that's my other Hoboken story, Tom Zetti story. So he, he was quite a kind, kind person. Yeah, he was. Mm. Yeah. You had mentioned that you have lived through uh, Yuppies Invade My House at dinner time. So you've been here for the whole you were at the beginning here? Uh, we what? were the thin edge of the wedge, as they say. We were the... The, oh, in the first or second wave of rent and refugees from New York. And uh, we had looked around in Brooklyn and uh, when we got to Hoboken, it felt like more open and more kind of airy. Um, and then of course there was, you know, you could walk to the river and all of those things really appealed to us. And we found an apartment that actually was what we needed for the money we had, we, we could spend. So that's that's how we landed here. And obviously we like it, <laughs> so. And you're still in the same apartment today. Yeah, yeah, we haven't moved. It's, it's worked out, it's worked out really well. 
Would you like to go to some of the slides? We'll start with the slides. Okay, sure. Rand, could you bring us the first slide? Oh, where is the, um, well, I was going to say, well, this is our first slide. Do you want to <laughs> describe that a little? This is a portrait of me taken by my, my very talented photographer husband, Tom. <laughs> so I, I can't, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know how he did that, but no. Um, <laughs> Hi, Hi Annie. <laughs> Ann Williamson is saying hello, Maggie is my lovely sister. That's uh, that's my sister in Indianapolis. And here's Grand Lake, St. Mary's, um, in Western Ohio. This is uh, Salina, Ohio, is the town I was from, and it's that's that's postcard is about the same age as I am. <laughs> Is that you in the red jacket in the top? <laughs> it looks like your hair. I wouldn't be fishing, but yeah, that's that's probably me. I wish. Brad Johnson is saying thank you, Bill and Maggie and the Hoboken Historical Museum for doing these wonderful talks, which really archive the modern history of our great city. Thank you so much, Brad. And we'll have you on here real soon too. Fingers crossed. This is um, these guys are the the guy on the right is um, our landlord Vinny uh, De Janeiro and he was um, he's no longer with us sadly and we miss him dearly but he was just a wonderful wonderful guy um, in a in that next to him is Richie Pizzetti he is the, his partner and it, two of them were just great to hang out with we would well, we would talk about food a lot, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and I have a story about him, which is that um, after a few years in the building, my husband went down to, Tom went down to talk to Vinny and say, you know, you haven't raised the rent. Um, you could, you could up it a little and, you know, we could, we could do that. And then he said, oh, everybody's got to live somewhere. And I don't know if anybody else who has a story like that about their <laughs> landlord, but he was just, just lovely. And is your current la la landlord? Um, his his son owns the, or his wife owns the building, and his son uh, manages it for him. And we're, uh, you know, we're very very lucky. Great. Yeah. So. And there is the front of the building with the. Um, dry tailor and dry cleaning uh, business that Vinny ran um, while he was alive, and it's now owned by Paul and Anna, and they are just uh, sweet as pie, mm -hmm. lovely people. And that's my snowman. Oh. That I was determined to build out of whatever little snow was still available, uh, not long ago. So that's this year. Well, I think it was. I think it was last year, but yeah. Mm. And that is Mayor Vizetti wow. with my parents on our wedding day. And uh, it was just, uh, well, of course, it was a special day, it was my wedding day. But it, it was really a wonderful moment because it was in our home. Mm. Um, m and Mano Bianco sent, tra we, we got trays from them. We had the cake from Giorgio's. It was just about as Hoboken a, a wedding as you can get. And uh, guests were talking for years about the cake and about the food, which, you know, this was back in the days when New York didn't have the, the food that Hoboken has. Mm. Hoboken's very special. Was that first restaurant you mentioned, were they on Washington Street? Too? Yeah, they're on Washington Street. I think they're not far from Giorgio's. I think they're between all of them. 10th and 11th or 11th, 11th and 12th. Are they still here too? Oh yeah, yeah, they're still here. Mm -hmm. Great ones. He's quite a sharp dresser. <laughs> yes, he used to mix plaids and he would go up and down Washington Street with his bullhorn, you know, um, just talking to people and very outgoing, funny mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. He'd ride the bus and just talk to people, yeah. What was his motto? Do you remember always said that? Oh, he just said that to my friend. It was just um, always, oh, oh always, always a pleasure. pleasure. No, 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 right. Always, always a, pleasure a pleasure is what he said. Always a pleasure. <laughs> yes, it was pretty cool being married in my home by the mayor. Very, very funny. 
a very wonderful thing that he could do that he did that. Oh, um, uh, and I think most Hoboken people will know where we are. This is uh, a painting by my friend Kevin McCloskey uh, of the window at Benny Tadino's, mm. the pizzeria, where the yeah the pizzas are like wagon wheels. <laughs> and uh, uh, he Ben uh, well Benny's we know. But my friend Kevin is an illustrator, and he now is teaching um, illustration in Pennsylvania. In cuts town and he did the hobokener yes he did the hobokener poster which we have a copy of on our wall where did you meet kevin well that's a good question um we, he they he and his wife lived on ninth street and i imagine we just bumped into him in the neighborhood kevin's the kind of person who you would just he would just talk to you and then you would know him and then you would be his friend and that's how it went, you know. So, mm. um, yeah, I miss I miss that he and Pat don't live here anymore. But they've been out in Cutstown for a long time. Nice. Yeah. And mm. Another business. This is Cusselux Shoes. Um, you, you'll well, it's on the corner where Anthony Davids is now, and. Um, that drawing is one I did. It looks like it was done in 89. And uh, I was probably sitting across the corner uh, waiting for my laundry to get done. It was a laundromat um, on the opposite, the caddy corner from the, from the shoe store. And that's, uh, I got to tell you, Sam was running that shoe store when he was really on in years and he would not be, he wasn't in there every day, but one day my husband decided, Tom, and Tom decided he was going to go get some, a pair of shoes from Sam. Hmm. Saw some boots in the window. He went in and found something he liked and, and he was going to pay. And he said, so Sam, uh, do you, do you take Visa or MasterCard? Yeah. And Sam said, ah, oh, Tommy, I'm not set up for that. And that, so he Tom went home and got cash, but that became kind of a I'm not set up for that it became a sort of slogan around the house. <laughs> so. Did he live above the store? He did. And uh, when he passed away, they mm. went in to like empty out the apartment. And there were, I think, about 30 years worth of newspapers stacked up. The place had just got enough room for a person to walk through. Now, this is hearsay. I wasn't there. But, right, you know, that's right. what I heard. Oh. So, yeah, he was a character. Was a character. So, got another, yeah, okay. Oh, well, this is from my recent efforts at plein air painting. Mm. Uh, I, I, um, this is a car roof, roses with the uh, car roof and the buildings. And uh, I just got out there and found a scene that I wanted to do. And the, the roses, of course, were there, but I thought they'd be a nice high note to the composition there. And uh, just felt like doing like a grid of windows that day. So mm. that's what's going on. Is that, do you work oil on canvas or? Yeah, that's a canvas over a board, um, a, like a cardboard. The, um, it's oil. Yeah, it's oil. I'm actually, side note i'm doing um that's water what they call water mixable oil mm. which you can um yeah you can clean up with water and so so it's a little easier to especially to take outside than um than a oil that you have to clean up with turps beautiful thank you thank you uh here's another place where um we go to paint sometimes and this is um a little example of it's the church on um oh come on help me bill you know community what? church yeah. sixth and garden yeah that's the one um and they have a lovely lawn and garden area um between the church and the rectory and then um this is on one side of the church the, they do a lot that they seem to do a lot of really interesting gardening that has to do with like the bio biodiversity and kind of ecological things and they do some they have, you see little signs around there that have um kind of educational stuff on them this this row for the like kids this row mm -hmm. is vegetables 
this row is you know flowers mm. something like that and uh, it's a wonderful place to just go and well paint or sit and you can um follow the flowers through the year mm. through the season are you saying it's like a open year-round botanic garden anyone can go in yeah pretty much you can you know there's you just go in and kind of walk through and see what's what's there or you, you can sit it's a nice quiet spot too and uh they seem to not mind they've come by when i was there and just said hello and chatted so it seems great uh, wow okay here's <laughs> This is across the corner from um, Caddy Corner from uh, my building, oh. and uh, it used to be a Seventh Day Adventist church. You'd hear singing on Saturday mornings, and the area would fill up with cars parked along. Um, and uh, oh, I guess some years back, it was sold and um, slated for renovation, and it's now the the Raphael apartment building or apartments and they're you know really deluxe um there was a little consternation when the word of uh, the uh, you know the uh, conversion a uh, condo conversion was um first heard that people thought oh you know it's gonna they're gonna build up to the sky we're gonna lose <laughs> our view there's what you know all kinds of that's the usual things people worry about when they have uh, live in the neighborhood it turned out to my thinking it turned out all right mm. um but i do remember back when there was hurricane sandy um the parishioners made dinners and they had them they were had them available in the base in the mm. church basement so uh, mm. we actually had a chicken dinner there <laughs> during sandy mm. yeah And this is just my nightly view, getting home from uh, work. I used to work a little late at the office, and uh, one night I just thought the light looked very pretty, so I just snapped this. That's our building. You're a good photographer, too. <laughs> well, thanks. More Ninth Street stuff. This is uh, during, a, obviously, after a snowfall. Uh, a couple winters ago, I think it was pre-COVID, but um, no, it, it wasn't. Anyway, uh, the the plants are just looking out at the snow, and I decided to paint them. And uh, I like that view; it's really mm. kind of fun to do. That that cactus now is about three times the size of this wow. I'm painting, and. Uh, uh, yeah, that's mm. just looking up Ninth Street towards Washington. The second red building on the left is on the corner of Washington by the bus stop. The oral surgeon. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So beautiful. And our Christmas cactus was blooming. So it's probably near Christmas. And this wow. is 4th of July. We'll go from winter to summer. But one of the cool things about our apartment is that you can see the um, Empire State Building mm -hmm. and the fireworks on the 4th of July, mm -hmm. if they're on the Hudson, you can see them from our uh, bedroom window. Mm. So you just, um, uh, <laughs> thanks, Lois. <laughs> Lois says, great painting. Yes. Um, and thanks for the great copy, Lois. <laughs> yeah. So. At, since the renovation of the, the church has that have you been obstructed? Not at all. In fact, you can kind of see the church on the left of the uh, uh, photograph. That's the church there. So it's behind where the view, the view of the New York, whatever view of New York skyline we had. So, so nothing really was added. It was just um, improved, like yeah. renovated. Yeah, as far as I can tell, there's nothing. Um, it doesn't take up any more, uh, much more skyline than. Mm. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> yes, we have. I have plenty of time to wind that up. Here's our. You're you're seeing everything that's outside our apartment building. Mm. This is, um, uh, you know, our clothesline in the winter <laughs> with snow all over it, um, and 
you know, clotheslines I hear are a bit controversial. Mm. Like people don't like them. It, they look messy in the skyline or something like that. To me, they're just romantic. Mm. You know, I love like old timey stuff. Well, and on top of which, they're they're a nice way to avoid using electricity and you know warming up the planet. So yes. they're good for that too. And here it is. <laughs> Again, we go from winter to summer. This is the, um, uh, these are Tom's socks. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. But uh, these are Tom's socks on the line, and they just made such a nice little composition. I mm. snag them. How high are you, the second, third floor in your apartment? We're the third floor. Third floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. And here's our late lamented sage bush it um, outgrew its container and this was at the its, its peak uh, a couple of years ago it was just a, astonishing I, I um, but yeah it it uh, busted out of its container and they had when in the process of replanting it it just it just didn't it's it was never the same old sage plant so um, we have new ones now and uh, we are hoping they get to this point. Wow. You had mentioned there was, you have a cat who's the neighbor who oh, jumped into the. Well, he's been sleeping in there and oh. stuff. So it, it had, it, the, the sage didn't seem to like that either. <laughs> but anyway. But the cat did. The cat loved the sage. Yes. There's a wonderful Hoboken um, Christmas decoration. <laughs> this I just thought was. <laughs> I don't know. It still makes me laugh, even though. Uh, but this is this is what you see around Hoboken at Christmas. It's the, the, this town loves to decorate, and there's always stuff out. Um, and this is actually one of the. Um, I stopped on one of my runs. I run around the city and um, and took this photo because these trees just turned mm. this fabulous yellow mm. in around the end of September, early October. And then the ground just gets covered with the uh, leaves as they start to fall. So um, it just, I, and it's uh, next door to the Lipton Tea Building, mm. which, <laughs> wedding theme. This is, it, there used to be a lot of businesses in that building when it was done being a, well, I guess it was still a factory building to a certain extent, but it was starting to wane. But our, we bought our, um, ordered our wedding invitations from a printer in that building. And uh, the woman who waited on us had a parrot on her shoulder. So that made an impression. Wow. <laughs> we, thought, we felt like we'd come to the right place. <laughs> you mentioned jogging. Do you have a favorite uh, jogging uh, um, route in Hoboken that you can share with people? Um, yeah, I can. Oh, um, Carol. Yeah. Uh, honey locust trees, that's what they are. I never knew. Thank you. <laughs> but yes, um, I have a running route, which is about three and a half miles. Um, I don't know, it, give or take. But I run from my apartment up Bloomfield Street across um, around the back of that uh, area, the T building, and then down, um, well, just down along the waterfront. And then reverse it and come back. Mm. Um, that's what I was doing up until um, COVID. And then after the mayor said, you know, please try to avoid crowded areas mm. and uh, mentioned not like running along the pier, we uh, I, I just started running up north of the city, which um, is much less active. And then I started running further and further north until you know, I, I just, I don't know, I finally ran across the GW Bridge. Wow. <laughs> so so we're talking what? River Walk. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. That's right. Uh, that was, uh, and running was like kind of my, it saved my brain during, uh, during the pandemic. It was like my way of getting out, but not, you know, being uh, at risk. Mm -hmm. or, at risking anybody else either so it was but this is this is like 
Uh, yeah, this is really a, a primo, one of the primo views. Mm. So that's that's like. Here's another primo view. Um, this is, I love Hoboken Beach. I'm not there a lot, but I love it. And uh, I thought this boat was really interesting. I, I never took that one out on the water, but I've done, done the, the free kayaking a bunch of times mm. in uh, in this area where it's by the Hoboken Boathouse. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, it's just so nice to actually have access to the river. That was one of the things when we moved here that I felt it was kind of a loss because, you know, you have a river, but you can't go to a water's edge. And right. I really like to do that. So I was happy when this came along. And um, in the next slide, if you can get that, there's the kayaking. Um, I love that the, it says gate, keep gates closed at all time and the gates are open. It's just the rebel in me that thinks that's really wonderful. But uh, you can see the little kayaks that they have that are available for, um, in the summer from, um, I think, Memorial Day to Labor Day mm. on weekends. There's, there's uh, you can take it out for 20 minutes or longer if there's not a line. And uh, that's... There's just nothing like being in a boat on water. I just, mm. I, for me, it's not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> so, and here, I think this might've been my birthday. This was, I went to the beach. <laughs> there was an actual, when you're, um, you know, I brought a towel, uh, just, and a, a, something to drink and the sun <laughs> visors and, um, and, and the New Yorker. And uh, that was honestly, if you, Put that, if I put down the magazine and just laid back on the towel and closed my eyes, I could have been at the shore. Because wow. you could hear the, the soft waves just breaking. It's, it's really wow. a nice thing if you can't get away. Okay. Is your birthday in July? Yeah. yeah. July 8th? Mm, third. Mm. <laughs> right, before, uh, right before Independence Day. Wow. Oh, this, our neighbor across the street sits out and um, that's only one of several chairs they've got. Often there's three or four or five or six people sitting around um, in uh, in Vinny's and Chris's drive. Uh, we've just spent, I've spent a lot of time just hanging out, like chatting with them. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing to have happen. So I just, when I saw that, I thought, oh, look at that. You know, there's his chair and the flag. And so that was, um, it's just a nice memento of him. Mm. Have you ever painted that group scene from your window? Oh, I never, oh, I don't think I can see that from the window. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, but that wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, I'd, I'd probably take a snapshot of them. Mm -hmm. And then and paint from that back in the studio. So, ah, uh, uh, here's another neighbor. Wow! This is our neighbor Bobby salting his um, <laughs> sidewalk. And uh, I just, you know, what caught me there was just the well, I love the red, but the mm. the gesture of his arm, mm. just the you know, um, I just thought his his posture was so mm. neat um, and. Uh, so that's another neighbor. And he is actually, he's frequently um, sitting out with Benny. You'll, you'll find them together a lot. So. You mentioned the red, is that brick? From the brick of a building? Yeah, yeah that's a brick building. And, you know, the snowy yard, which I kind of eliminated a lot of the details that would be there. But I was going to say, I like that there are no details. Where did you learn to just put the essence down? Hmm. You know, I think mm. the first time I got that idea or encountered that idea was in art school when they had us do this like abstraction exercise. You, mm. you start with, um, um, you know, a complicated drawing and then you do another one that's simpler and then you take more stuff out and you do seven or eight drawings mm. and you get down to as minimal as you can. Mm. So. And then you can you see what happens when you do that, and you know whether you like the results or not. Mm. You know, then you know whether to try it again in a, another work. And that's how that came about. 
Lois is saying, I love to hear you talk about your <laughs> art. What moves you into painting or shoot something? Oh, wow. That's a... Uh, well, there are certain things I really like. Uh, you know, I like to paint people. I like to... And I, I also like when there's a sort of a graphic thing that's happening with uh, something I'm seeing. Mm. Um Sometimes I don't know what it is. I just think I'm just attracted to something. Right. I think that I got to do that. I, you know, and it's in that sense, it's kind of a way of of taking it out of the world and having it for myself. Mm. You know, a very very uh, acquisitive mm. <laughs> impulse. Mm. Like I want that thing, or I want to see something. I want to see that more often. I'm going to make a picture of it, and then it mm. will be permanent, or then I'll have it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's 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 usually what makes the uh, makes me stop and take a photograph. So this was from a photo. Mm -hmm. Well, that one, yeah, that one was both from a photo and looking out the window because mm -hmm. I could see. Um, I had taken the photo, but I could also see the scene, so I could go and um, refer to it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. What size are those? What size do you work? These are small. I think this one is about six by eight. Um, and the the kind of plein air realistic work I've been doing lately is generally smaller um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, you, have, you don't have a lot of time to do right. something outdoors. But also, um, you're, um, I, I, I have a, a storage area full of big paintings. I don't have any more room. I really had to cut down just so that I could like not uh, could open the doors in my, <laughs> my build in my space. So that's. Do you take commissions? You seem to capture the essence of things well. Um, well, I I do. I haven't um, I haven't done a lot of them, but I have done You're some. You're open to. Uh, yeah, I, most of the things I've done have been. Um, pictures of, of pets and people's people's animals that they either lost and want them from some kind of memorial or um, or just I, I did a, a painting um, of my uh, of, a, of a cat that is just was just for the house they wanted a picture of the cat besides the cat itself so I, mean, I guess it was better to have two than one <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is this is an example of how Frank Sinatra turns up all over Hoboken. <laughs> um, I was at the eye doctor's, and I was just waiting to go in for my eye test. And I looked up, and there he was. And I thought, well, okay, you know where you are. So that's pretty much that. That's all that there is to that photo. But it it uh, it was a remarkable thing to me. Mm. Did they have him on the? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but if you want to listen to Frank Sinatra, at least the last time I was there, which is a long time ago, but Leo's Grandevu is where you want to go because they have a jukebox full of Frank, full of Frank Sinatra, and someone's always putting the tunes on. So that's the place to go. For and me. how's the food, the Italian? It's good. It's good, you know, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a comfortable place. It's a really comfortable hangout. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, <laughs> yes, Brad. <laughs> yes, it is. Adele, Adele Birdie. Yeah. Are they no longer there? Is that correct? Uh, oh, I don't know. It looks like I think they may have left. I'm not 100 percent Right here on 12th and yeah. Washington. Yeah. 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 It's oh, still I practice. It's just not the elder anymore. Oh. oh, okay. All right. Yeah. And here's well, is this your backyard? <laughs> that, is the, that is the view from uh, yeah our dining room window. Oh, wow. You've got great views. We do, we do. You, it's a, it's got three sides of views, so you you can see out a lot. Yeah, that is Frank Sinatra's tree. Well, we call it that, um, but it actually is in the backyard of the house that he bought for his mother. Oh. So that was Dolly's house, mm. and uh, so it is truly Frank's tree. Or, you know, and uh, 
I don't know whose tree it is now, but it's, that's what we call it. So it was about 934 Garden Street? You know, Something like that, 933? Like we're eight. Oh. It would be an eight, eight in the 800 block. Gotcha. So, yeah. This beige one. Yeah, I would. I think so. I think mm. that's it. It's kind of hard to line up. There. Yeah, it's kind of hard to line up the uh -huh. tree and the. Um, <laughs> so but that's Frank's tree. Pretty tall. There's a yeah. There's a cardinal that lives in there, oh. and yeah, we, we call him Cardinal Mendoza after a, <laughs> a, a, a sherry that we used to drink. Anyway. <laughs> Why but, that name? Well, no. We, oh, because uh, you would yeah, see the bird after you had yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> no, but the bird was real. It was, we weren't hallucinating. But uh, this is um, just a nice example of what Hoboken does for holidays. And this mm. is Halloween. And uh, this is just a small piece of this house's decoration. Mm. Another piece was a former exercise machine with a skeleton attached to it. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they do, a, they do, a, the town does a real bang up job of Halloween. Oh. oh, and this is, you know, something that you see now a lot as the, um, the waterfront has, walkway has been expanding. And I, this, I just stopped on a run because, you know, it's cute little um, geese babies mm. are out there. And, um, you know, they, they, they will walk right across your mm. um, path when you're running. So you sort of have to like zig and zag. But um, it, it's wonderful to see nature. I, I, I worry a little bit because some of the geese don't seem to um, migrate anymore. But I, I don't know exactly what that's all about. But anyway, there they are. And it's just about time for them to be back. Mm. They're starting to nest. You watch them and you can see a pair of geese kind of chasing each other around and you know that they'll be sitting on the nest, you know, in a week or two, and then you'll be seeing these little guys again. And where actually is that? Is that Pier? Oh, Maxwell House Farm. Maxwell House. I think that's where that is. Yeah. No, wait a second. No, I know where that is. That's on, um, that's just above the T building. You're heading like north towards that hotel up there, on uh, towards Weehawken. On River Wall. On um, yeah. Oh, look at. <laughs> eight thirty-seven. Yeah, eight thirty. So that's Sinatra's house. Yeah. So. It's supposed to be your picture of this guy. Hmm. Well, that's you are a good photographer. Do you, does, <laughs> you, re, you really are good. No, this is probably one of five good ones from thousands, but um, but thank you, thank you. I should just say thank you. Is that the moon up there? That's the that's why I took wow. the photo. It's the moon and the lamplight that were they were together, and um, that's uh, you know, Pure A Park has brought. I, I mean, I was here before it, and uh, I remember kind of um, getting excited that we were getting something, you know, your, um, you know, an addition like that to the waterfront. And it was, you know, you just used to walk along the waterfront, and that's where you were. But now with that, with those piers, um, we could walk way out on the water, and it felt like you were halfway to New York. Mm. Um, and I, they've been here so long now, I forgot that there was a time when, you know, we just didn't have all that waterfront. Um, it was, uh, it was, a lot of it was just, you know, kind of rubbly and, you know, torn down buildings and obviously things that were just kind of in real estate storage you know, until the, the whole um, whatever deals went through with the Port Authority for the mm -hmm. space, the thing to be opened up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Eric is saying a street light moon and a New York in the sunlight, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. That's great. You know, this is, um, oh, yeah. Tell us about this. Well, these are, you know, Hoboken has lots of parades and the, the People come out for them. 
And uh, I, I, this is a, a particularly cool one because it is, um, I'm not really sure. One of them is um, called Mar Maria Martieri, I think it's called. Uh, someone can help me out with that. But um, the, a lot of Hoboken residents are from the area around Mal Malfetta in Italy. Uh, I've talked to a bunch of our neighbors about, you know, that and some of them have gone back to um, just check out the old, uh, you know, what their, their homestead, their like sort of place of origin. And uh, so this was, I think those are oars. And the, mm. the, at the end of this parade, they take the statue, you'll see the statue in, an, in another shot, but they, they take the statue of Mary and they put her on the, um, a boat, the ferry, and then they take, they, she goes now, I think, from Pier A to the, um, uh, the North Ferry Dock. But it, the, it, it's a, I'm sure it's a tradition from the old country with the, you know, the statue went out on the water mm -hmm. and uh, it was kind of a blessing for the fishermen, I think. And, you know, you don't quote me, but that's, that's pretty much what I remember hearing. And, um, uh, but these, there's one, and uh, I think ne the next slide has the, yes, wow. there's the statue and that is being carried down to the ferry but also just, just being, you know, shown in the parade. Um, is that your photograph? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, is so. that one when they have the uh, fireworks also a second time? I think, I think in July. Do, yeah. I don't know if it's in July, July or August. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a feast where, you know, they would carry a statue around the streets of Hoboken and it would stop and there was a cannon kind of thing. Mm. They would shoot off uh, whenever um, at the house of anybody who donated. So, um, and I, I remember that being a controversial thing because it would go on for a couple of days and there'd be these booms and booms all, you know, throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, people who didn't know what was going on seemed to not like it. Um, I kind of thought it was, well, it was, it, it was, just another interesting thing about being in Hoboken. It made me feel like I was in another country. And I always liked that feeling. So, oh, and here I have to do a shout out to um, the Hoboken for the handling of the, the pandemic. This is a shot of uh, uh -huh. the, the, Clinic Assumption Hall, where we went to have our get our COVID shots, and uh, I I don't know why I took this picture. I think it was just to mark the moment mm. because it was like we we did it, we did it, we finally got vaccinated. This nightmare is like going to get better now, and um, those are all those little um, papers on the wall are all statements that people made about. Mm. Um, mm you know, why they're getting vaccinated. Mm -hmm. So we got vaccinated and, mm. uh, and uh, yeah, life began again, in a sort of. Is that where they also, did you get your booster shot there? No, you know what? We got our booster shot. We heard they were available. We heard they had them, they were, you could get them um, outside the Y up here at 13th street. And um, so we ran up <laughs> and uh, there, I mean, it's a cold day. And you're, you're like, oh, you want me to take my coat off and roll my sleeve? <laughs> yeah, but um, outside, outside, it was outside the Y. But I just handed to him that that was like, you know, you heard that there were boosters available, and the next thing you knew, you were getting a notification that you could go and get one. And um, at that point, it wasn't really done by age groups anymore, like the first rounds of uh, vaccination. It was just, you know they're there go get it right so right. but i think they did such a great job of getting mm -hmm. um, getting the vaccine right to us as soon as it became available mm -hmm. so hats off to the city for that <laughs> this is another pandemic related uh shot I, these are uh i started doing cartoons um and uh, as little pics <laughs> and i um 
uh, this is one that ran uh, at the early part of uh, lockdown, shutdown, work from home, whatever you want to call it. Um, and every afternoon at four o'clock, just to avoid going crazy, um, Tom and I would just come downstairs and walk around the block. Sometimes two blocks, usually just one, and go right back in. And that was, uh, that's, well, that's how the first part, the first few months of the pandemic went. That must have been back in like March or so, because we're wearing winter clothes and it was, yeah. March 20? March, yeah. The March when 20. it really began. Yeah. And that's the um, dry cleaners yeah, that the, you live above? Yeah, uh -huh. that's our building. And uh, so you also do this this kind of style, very colorful, very nice. Oh, thanks. Um, yes, they were in black and white until COVID. And then after I stopped commuting, I had time to add color. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, silver lining of a kind. But uh, it was, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's right from them. And mm. there, it's another neighborhood site and, and uh, more pizza. It's um, Torna Pizza, which is on 9th Street, I think between Willow and Park. Park. Okay, thank you. And that's, um, I don't know, I just just saw that couple having pizza. And <laughs> uh, I thought it was such a nice Hoboken scene that I was just, I did a drawing of it. And then that that came about. Do you have a favorite Italian restaurant? Well, let's see. Um, or pizza? Pizza Paolo? Pizza. I, 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 well, we go to margaritas most of the time, but I like a lot of the different types of pizza mm -hmm. they have here. Um, there's an, uh, what is it? Zero Auto Uno has really good pies. And uh, the place up uptown, um, Apulia. Apulia, has a has a, a a good pie also so but i also like the good old bennies so they're, they're just and i make my own at home sometimes too so that i learned to make pizza dough it took about a dozen pizzas before it came out right but wow. now i can do it and now uh, so yeah it's a it's a pizza town Maggie, before we close, thank you so much. Um, mm. You had mentioned about um, you do a lot of, sometimes you paint or draw animals, and you had mentioned that you were you were part of the um, group that in Elysian Field helped uh, save a lot of trees and also build a dog park that wasn't there. Oh. Do you want to share a little bit about that? That is some whole book in history. Um, yeah, back in... It must have been the 90s, mid 90s, maybe. Um, there was talk that they were going to renovate um, the Elysian Park, and Elysian Park was um, where we we had a dog back then, and Elysian Park is where we took him to, you know, for walks. And um, there was a, an unofficial sort of timeshare, I guess you'd call it, in the park. Uh, the, the 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 dog walkers would come out early, and uh, they take their um, take their dogs around and then um, maybe w we would leave go to work or whatever and the the um, people with kids would come in and then they would use the park for their um, uh, recreation and uh, but then uh, with the renovation the uh, there was going to be we saw that there was there, there were um, new leash laws and they were there was a need to really to crack down on um, dogs just kind of running around so um we saw the new like the plans for the renovation of the park and noticed there was no dog run mm. so the dog the people who had dogs just sort of said well the, you know we we've got to take our dogs somewhere um they need to interact and play and all that so they we just said Look, there has to be um, there has to be a dog run. So you know, we've got a bunch of people together and there were a bunch of meetings and this and that. And uh, finally we saw there was a, a new plan that involved um, a dog run, but also a lot of pavement 
being done in the front of the park. So we, you know, it doesn't make sense. It's a park, you know, you can't take, you know, um, part of the pavement story is that a lot of the trees were obviously slated to be mm -hmm. um, removed. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it just didn't make a lot of sense, but people weren't really re reacting to just seeing it. And uh, about the time that the renovation was gonna begin, um, someone came through the park and just painted yellow X's on all the trees that were slated to come down. And, um, and he, and they, uh, people then realized what was about to happen and there was an outcry and the, the, they revisited the plan and the tree stayed. So that's a, a little story from back in the nineties, Hoboken. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything I we haven't covered that you might like to share with our audience? Mm. Something. Well, I, I will say that in the course of um, like after I knew I was going to do this talk, um, I went back over you know all my memories of Hoboken and things that had happened. And we have like, a comment from Kevin McCloskey. Well done, Maggie <laughs> oh, and Bill. Oh, Kevin, nice. <laughs> To hear from you. <laughs> nice to see your face. Oh, um, just I realized this place has really become home over the years. You know, I moved here like a lot of people who come from um, outside of the area who just think, well, I'll be here for a while and then I'll move on to something else. And then, well, it was nice here, so we stayed. And, uh, and that I just feel, uh, I don't know, just it's a, it's a good place. It's a good place. That's, and I kind of got um, a lot more um, aware of that when I was thinking back over the memories this place has. Mm -hmm. So, and um, I don't know, I'm trying to think if there's other stuff. The, um, yeah, we, I think that might be a good place to stop. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Thank you so much, Maggie, for sharing your Hoboken with us. Thank you. It's been really wonderful to do. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Um, next week, our Hoboken talk will be with Carol Cusack, uh, and I believe Rand Hoppy will be interviewing her. After that, will be our Rabbi Robert. Schinenberg? Scheinberg. Scheinberg. Eric says your pictures capture. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Hoboken you. Hoboken so nicely. <laughs> oh. and Eric is going to be the interviewer for Rabbi Scheinberg. Wonderful. Wonderful. Best wishes, Eric. I would like to thank the estate of Mel Kernan for their generous support to the museum. And we'd also like to thank the New Jersey Historian Historical Commission for all their support. And also the New Jersey Council for the Humanities. Thank you so much for your help over the years. And of course, we want to thank and acknowledge the um, Shipyard Circle for their high level of financial support to, to us. And of course, Applied, who gives us this space and helps us in so many ways. Thank you so much, Applied. Uh, before we close, we just want to invite you. Our main new exhibition is called The Avenue, The History of Washington Street. It's filled with wonderful artifacts, uh, photos, and maps all about Hoboken's Main Street, Washington Street. Please come and join us. Um, and also our wonderful exhibition in the upper gallery where this is actually filmed is a um, two-person show, Liz and Ibu, Ibu Nodon. It's called Adjacent. It mixes uh, works on paper with uh, colorful works uh, on painted on glass. And that's in our upper gallery. That's through May 1st. Um, please feel free to uh, send us comments. Don't forget if 
you like to watch this uh, episode later, you can watch it on our YouTube channel. Uh, please come to the museum and uh, become a member. Thank you so much all for your support. Uh, thanks to everyone who made the Hoboken Historical Mu Museum's talk possible. Thank you, Ran. Thank you to all our members, the director. And again, Maggie, thank you so much. It was wonderful learning more about our Hoboken. Thank you. Thank you so much for asking me. It was really wonderful to do.